Hey, this is OXDF, and we're doing another challenge from the Hack the Boo CTF. Uh, this time we're in the crypto category doing a challenge called Gotta Lift Them All. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. They give us two things here in the zip file. The first is this data.txt, and the second is child.py. We can take a quick look at data.txt, and it's just a series of, uh, we get a P, a G, an H, a C1, and a C2. I think that'll make a lot more sense once we look at uh, child.py. And so... In this one, we start off with, we have a flag with some dummy placeholders. Clearly, clearly um, there's a re that, that's not what was there. There's probably a real flag there. Um, we have a few functions here. Um, the main function is going to call this genparams function. Genparams is going to get a prime number, um, 1,024 byte prime. Um, we're then going to get two random integers between 0 and 2 by 2 less than that prime. And we're going to calculate an h, which is the uh, g to the x mod p. And in this, h, g, and p, g, and h are going to be the public key when you're doing um, this kind of logarithmic-based, um, power-based encryption. And x is going to be the private key. So without x, we shouldn't be able to decrypt. Um, so it gets the private, and, and you can see right here, it gets the public key and the private key, just like that. Um, and then it calls encrypt with the, uh, with the public key, it's taking the message here, and uh, it breaks it breaks the public key, key back into PG and H. Um, it gets another Y, which is a random integer between zero between two and P P minus two, um, and it calculates an S, and then it returns these different values. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but we're, we're here, but we, we're basically we can still we, we there's a the problem here is that these these multiplications right here should you know, um, when you raise something to a power in a modular world, taking it back, going logarithmic is, is computationally infeasible. And that's why encryption works. Um, we have these one-way functions, like raising something to a power is really easy, you know, calculating H here. But, you know, knowing H, G, and P, calculating X is not easy. Um, so, but here we're using multiplication instead. And we can do those inverse operations pretty trivially. And so that's why this is not, uh, not safe. So what we're going to do is we're going to start writing a program here. We'll call it, we'll call this on vim uh, decrypt.py. We will always start with our shebang, env python3. Um, I don't know if we even are going to need any libraries here. So let's do with open data.txt, oops, dot, dot text for reading as f. And we'll do, uh, hmm, what's the best way to do this? We can do lines equals f dot read lines. But I bet we can do some more processing on this. Um, this is one of those cases where uh, I like to do things neat, kind of like all, lots of things at once, and it might be harder to follow that way. But we're going to try it. So we're going to, because of that, we're going to come here and do this. Um, let's see. We'll do Python minus i decrypt. And so if that's the case, right now we should have lines, which is the various lines of our data dot text. Great. Okay, so if we say, um, instead of doing that, if we do lines, um, if we do, the first thing we're going to do for each of these lines is split on the equal sign and get the stuff behind it. And actually, we also have these trailing new lines we want to get rid of on each one. So what we'll do first is we'll do a map, and we'll do the string.strip function on lines. If we run this, we're going to get a map object. We can see that mapped object by just getting a list. So now all that's done is trim the new line off each of these. Okay, that's fine. Um, Next, we can loop over these. So I guess we'll do this as x for x in. And now we have a generator. That's fine. Um, now we can say, I guess let's, for, the, for the sake of watching this, we'll do it as a list. Um, so now we can see the numbers. And what we really want is x dot split on that. We want to take the first one. So now we've got just the numbers. In fact, the first one's good. The second one's good. The third one's good. Um, the weird one is the last one, so we'll have to deal with this C one separately because it's kind of different. But so now what we can really do, we can grab this whole thing. We can go up here and we can say, can I not? Yeah, here we go. Uh, there we go. Ooh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's up arrow this. So we can say, we, we can come in here and do map, whoa. Vim got me there. Let's see. Map string dot strip comma f dot read line. So now we've just got that 
Now we've stripped the lines and we can say x for x in, and that's, you know, just each line, we're gonna call it x, could have called it L, could have called it anything else. Um, and now we'll do dot split this. There we, there we go, and get just the first object. So that's looking good. And now here, what we're gonna have is not lines, but um, we can actually see from up here what was printed out. So this will be P, G, H, we'll call this C's. So let's see if that worked. We can write that, we can get out of here, we can run this again and see like P, uh, G, H, and C's. Beautiful. Okay, so now we've got those things read in. We can say C1 comma C2 equals these. We'll get rid of the first character and the last character, which are these um, the quotes. And then we can do a dot split on that, on what with that. And then we can map, let's see, I want this to work. Map int onto there. Oh, we should do, we really need int on all of these, huh? Um, I guess we'll fix that in a second. We'll do that, see if that worked. C1, looks good. C2, looks good. P, not an int. So we want to get that. Um, so really what we need to do, I guess there's probably a clean way to do this. We'll do P equals int P, G equals int G, H equals int H, and there we go. Now we got our stuff. Okay, so we've read in all our data. Um, the question is now, how are we going to solve for this? So Let's take a second and we will kind of try to map out what this looks like. Um, what do we have so far? So we have um, P, G, H, C1, C2. We also know that, let's see, from our equations, shrink you, shrink, oops, that's not what I wanted, shrink you. Okay, from up here, from the way they're generated, we have, we know how a lot of these are defined relative to each other. So for example, we know that um, S is equal to H to the Y mod P. We know that uh, C1 is equal to G times Y mod P. Uh, we know that C2 is equal to M times S mod P. Um, I guess that that's probably what we know. We, what we want to get is M. M is our plain text message. So how are we going to get that? Um, because <clears throat> we can, we can start to use, we can say, we know this, uh, equation right here holds. That means also that M is going to be equal to let's make, make our spaces look nice. C2, uh, times S to the negative one mod. P. So the inverse of the S inverse, we can, we can't straight up divide here because we're doing modular arithmetic and that doesn't work, but we can multiply by the inverse on both sides. So, we, you know, this would be M times S times S inverse. And those two just cancel out, become one. And this becomes C two times S inverse. We know that an inverse exists, um, as long as S and P have no common divisors other than one or the greatest common divisor is one. Now, because P is prime, we're good there. Um, so we, we, and we know S is less than P, so we're good. We're good. S, S is going to exist. Um, so now we can, we can figure out what M is in terms of C2, which we have an S and we don't know S yet. Um, but we do have some data about S. If we, we, we know S is equal to H raised to the Y. Um, we don't know why, but we can find Y with this. So we can say the same way down here, we can say, um, Y is equal to C1 times G to the minus G inverse mod p. And now we've got everything we need to calculate it. So let's go ahead and actually do that. So we'll say y is equal to c1 times power g to the minus 1 mod p. And then we're actually going to make that whole thing mod p. Like that. So now that we have y calculated, we can say s is equal to power. Um, we've got this from right here. So we can actually just paste that right there. And we know those things. And when, now that we know S, we can say M is equal to C2 times pow uh, S comma minus one comma P and all of that mod P. And with that, we can actually give that a run, see how it looks. 
no errors. That's good. Uh, there's our M. We can say, uh, if we do like print that as hex, so we say M like hex like that, we can see the different, that is hex. And we can actually see, you know, 48, uh, that looks a lot like hack the HTB squiggly right there. So I think we got our flag. Um, so we just need to print this as bytes. So we'll come here and do uh, print and we're going to do bytes from hex dot decode. Then we just need to put our hex in here, which we already figured out is going to be F format string M comma X like that. Let's see if that works. All right, we run that and we get our flag. So um, this one is, can be in this crypto can be really intimidating. Um, in this case, it was as simple as just sitting there and kind of seeing what you got and what you can invert and what you can't. And because we were able to invert these right here, we were able to decrypt it pretty quickly. So thanks for sticking around with me till the end. And I will talk to you next time.